Essentially, there's three common types of arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease. Osteoarthritis, quote the wear and tear arthritis theory, and we'll get to that in a second. And psoriatic arthritis. Now, not a night goes by that you won't see one, two, or three commercials of happy dancing people with taking a drug to combat their rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or osteoarthritis. And you may have noticed there's always a band playing and there's always smiling, happy people with autoimmune diseases. Nothing could be further from the truth. So let's start with rheumatoid arthritis. As I mentioned, rheumatoid arthritis is one of the autoimmune arthritis diagnoses. Now, in the old days, we used to say that this was your immune system, your white blood cells, simplistically, attacking the lining of your joints by mistake. Now, we now know that it's not a mistake. It occurs through a process called molecular mimicry. And that is there are compounds that you eat that bear a striking resemblance to compounds in your joints, in your bones. And your immune system, because of leaky gut or intestinal permeability, becomes activated to look for these compounds. And because they look so similar, you attack these normal compounds in your joints as if they were foreign invaders. So it's actually not a mistake at all. It's an activation of your immune system caused by leaky gut. Now, I presented papers about this at the American Heart Association, lifestyle and epidemiology conferences. I've written books about the process of this, so I won't bore you any further. But rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease linked to leaky gut. Now, common symptoms, first of all, joint pain or joint swelling. But here's the amazing thing. You do not have to have joint pain to have rheumatoid arthritis. In fact, 50% of my patients with blood tests proven rheumatoid arthritis do not have joint pain. In fact, a number of my patients with coronary artery disease or a stent or a myocardial infarction their first presentation of their rheumatoid arthritis was actually a heart attack. Now, how can that be? Well, if you look at the literature, one of the biggest risk factors for having rheumatoid arthritis is actually coronary artery disease. And it actually makes sense if you've read my books because the lining of your blood vessels is virtually identical to the lining of your joint surfaces. So, if your immune system is attacking that lining in your joint, it makes sense that your immune system would also be attacking the lining of your blood vessels. So, it's the same process. So, it's no wonder that one of the initial presenting symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis is not joint pain, but a heart attack. Now, are there rare symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, numbness and tingling. Now, it has nothing to do with the rheumatoid arthritis per se. It actually has to do with the fact that you get joint spurs in your spine that begins pressing on nerves. And it's interesting the number of patients I have with neuropathy who have never had their rheumatoid arthritis markers measured because, well, what the heck, numb fingers have nothing to do with painful hands and joints, and they have rheumatoid arthritis as the cause because their nerves are being encroached on. Now, Dr. Google says that voice changes are a sign of rheumatoid arthritis. Quite frankly, I've never seen this, and I take care of a large number of people with rheumatoid arthritis. Never seen it. Now, Inflammation from rheumatoid arthritis could affect the vocal cords, causing hoarseness and changes in voice quality, but 
In 25 years, I've never seen it. Okay, so how do we make the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis? Well, the textbook definition is kind of what I gave you, but in my practice, there's absolutely no difference from inflammation causing these various forms of arthritis. In the end, inflammation is inflammation. So the cause is actually inflammation. And if you've read any of my books, you know that the cause of inflammation is not inflammatory foods. The cause of inflammation is leaky gut. And when we seal leaky gut, when we stop intestinal permeability, lo and behold, the inflammation goes away. Now, I've also seen in my patients that rheumatoid arthritis is misdiagnosed. These people are told they have rheumatoid arthritis, but in fact, they have lupus. They have systemic lupus erythematosus. And it's the lupus arthritis that's actually the cause. Now, to me, it really doesn't matter except for semantics. It just depends on which blood tests are positive. So, Lastly, psoriatic arthritis, same sort of thing. Again, you see it as a commercial every day. And what are they treating the psoriatic arthritis with? What are they treating the rheumatoid arthritis with? They are treating these people with immune suppressive drugs. Now, I got into this because I was a transplant immunologist as a transplant surgeon. And I researched how to fool the immune system in allowing me to put a heart from a, another person or a heart from a pig into you or a baboon and tell the immune system to look the other way. So when I started treating autoimmune patients, I was very frank. I don't know anything about autoimmune disease. That was 25 years ago but I know a whole lot about the immune system and what it's looking for and how to turn it off. So when I see my patients with autoimmune disease on these immune suppressant drugs, which do work to suppress the symptoms, first question I ask you is, what transplant did you have? Do you have a kidney transplant? Do you have a liver transplant? Do you have a heart transplant? Oh, no? Then why are you on a transplant drug? And that almost always gets my patient's eyebrows to raise and go, what? There are side effects of these transplant drugs that we're well willing as a patient and as a physician to manage because not managing this means you'll reject your heart, reject your lung, reject your liver, reject your kidney. And that's not a good thing, but that's totally different than managing a symptom of joint pain. So why did that symptom occur in the first place? It all comes down to inflammation from intestinal permeability, from leaky gut. And the treatment for these two conditions is identical. Now you may say, well, I have plain old osteoarthritis. And that's totally different. That's not the same process. I'll tell you a story. Early in my career as a heart surgeon, every week, we would have a cardiac catheterization conference where we would look at the angiogram of patients for surgery that week and where all the blockages were in the coronary arteries. And we inject dye into the coronary arteries to show this. And the heart is right in front of the spine. And one of the things that I think back is that everybody who I was operating on with coronary artery disease had osteoarthritis in their spine. Even young people, 36 years old, who had coronary artery disease, they had all these spurs of osteoarthritis in their spine. And I go, isn't that interesting? Gosh, is there a correlation? Well, as I've written about in many of my books, if you have a stent or a bypass, there's a 50% chance in the next five years you're going to have a hip or knee replacement. Similarly, if you've had a hip or a knee replacement, there's a 50% chance in five years 
you're going to have a stent or a heart attack or a bypass. Why? Because the process that caused the osteoarthritis is the same process that caused your heart disease. The process that caused your heart disease is the same process that caused your arthritis. They're identical. And that is from inflammation. And that inflammation is from one source and one source only, and that is intestinal permeability. You fix the intestinal permeability, the cause of the inflammation is resolved. What test do you ask your doctor to do? For rheumatoid arthritis, you're looking for rheumatoid arthritis markers. And the most common are rheumatoid factor, RF, and anti-CCP3. They're easily obtained. They're paid for by insurance. Those are the two you should ask for. Now, many people have both of them positive. Many people just have one or the other. Some people even have non-rheumatoid factor, rheumatoid arthritis. I personally think those people actually have lupus. What else should you ask for? To look for the other autoimmune causes of arthritis. You want to get an anti-nuclear antibody, A-N-A. You want to get E-N-A. For psoriatic arthritis, you will pick those up. You'll pick up the lupus marker, which is uh, A-N-A. You'll also get as part of these tests what are called double-stranded DNA. You'll get a test called chromatin, and you'll get a test called histone. Invariably, if you don't get all of these batteries of tests, for instance, ENA tests cover about 12 different autoimmune markers, you'll often miss the underlying problem. And I've seen many, many well-meaning patients have regular RF and anti-CCP3, even get an anti-nuclear test, but forget or skip the ENA test and miss the autoimmune disease completely. The point of all of this, arthritis of any type is not a normal part of aging. Your joints aren't wearing out like an old car. This has to do with leaky gut and LPSs, lipopolysaccharides. Where do they come from? Leaky gut. What does leaky gut cause? Inflammation. Again, it's okay to utilize these drugs early in the course of treatment, and I have nothing against them. I used them as a transplant surgeon. But the point is, you want to get off of these drugs. And that's why 80% of my practice now are patients with these conditions who recognize the long-term side effects are not what they want. Now, the great news is, as I publish, 94% of people with these autoimmune conditions within a year are off of their medications and symptom-free. And if you've watched my PBS special on longevity, you've met Jerry, who came to me for cardiac clearance for his knee replacement. And he was in his 60s. And his cardiac clearance, his stress test, and echo were fine. But his knee replacement was going to take six months before he was going to have it done. And I said, hey, since you got six months, why don't we get you started on the Plant Paradox program? We'll get a little weight off of you, and you'll be in better shape for your knee replacement. And he took me up on the offer. Well, I saw him right before his scheduled surgery to give the final clearance. And lo and behold, he had canceled the surgery. And I said, well, that's interesting. Why'd you do that? And he said, well, I don't have any knee pain anymore. Why would I have the surgery? And he literally jumped off the exam table and skipped around the room uh, to show me. And now I've recently seen Jerry. This has been about 10 years. Surprisingly, to probably you listening, Jerry has never had a knee replacement. Why? Because he fixed the underlying cause of why he was getting a knee replacement. And I see that over and over again. And that's why I keep seeing patients six days a week, because a miracle like Jerry is well worth seeing. 
And that's why I'm showing you this, because I'd like to see a miracle in your life too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. When I see patients with a high calcium level with a normal parathyroid level, the first thing I do is ask them to stop taking their calcium supplement 